Now, before we dig into the latest leaks, the secret features, and what to expect from Connect 2025, I want to share a personal experience that highlights why Meta is taking such a bold bet on glasses. A few months ago, I found myself at a music festival surrounded by friends, enjoying the vibe. We had a blast, dancing to the beats and soaking up the atmosphere. However, later that night we realized that amid the excitement, we had lost one of our crew, Sarah. Despite searching for her for quite a while, we couldn't find her. The festival was packed and communication was tough. It was a moment of panic realizing we couldn't locate her and the growing worry about what could have happened. But then I pulled out my MetaQuest headset, using the built-in group chat feature within the headset, quickly sent messages to everyone in our group, letting them know we were looking for Sarah and asking if they had seen her. Within minutes, we received crucial information. My friend Ben spotted Sarah on the other side of the festival grounds. Thanks to the headset, we were able to reunite with Sarah, ending our ordeal with a happy ending. It was a profound experience that showed the power of technology in fostering connection and safety. Us. But it also got me thinking about how we rely on smartphones for communication and how often we lose them or leave them behind. This event served as a catalyst for exploring the idea of wearable tech that stays with us at all times, enhancing our lives beyond our pockets. Fast forward to today, and I've been immersing myself in the world of smart glasses and their potential to shape the future of how we interact with technology and each other. What if the key to seamless communication, augmented reality, and even safety lies in a simple pair of glasses? This journey has led me to uncover the latest leaks, rumors and insights about Meta's upcoming smart glasses, which are set to be unveiled soon. I've delved deep into the code names, design features, and capabilities, piecing together a glimpse of what could be the future of wearable technology. Today I want to share what I've uncovered and invite you to join me in imagining the possibilities. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, futurist, or simply curious about the evolutions of technology, I believe you'll appreciate the exciting potential that lies ahead. The impact of wearable technology on our lives is just beginning to unfold, and I'm thrilled to be at the forefront of this journey. Join me, and let's explore the future together. But before we dive in, remember to hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis. All right, let's get into it. Now, if you thought last year's MetaConnect was all hype and no substance, then boy, oh boy, do I have news for you. This year's lineup is shaping up to be the biggest ever. VR will obviously steal some thunder with the Quest for Pro getting leaked left and right. But what's flying under the radar is even cooler. Mark is going full steam ahead on his baby, Project Cambria. No, I mean Reality OS. You heard that right. The code name that's been kicking around since 2019 is getting an official name and identity. And sources are saying it's going to be called Reality OS. I know, super creative, but apparently it fits perfectly with the brand and vision. No more confusion with Apple Vision OS either. By the way, insiders are whispering that the visual identity will resemble iOS. Clean, iconic, a capital R, and oh, this is the OS, powering everything from headsets to glasses to the rumored contact lens. One cohesive platform across devices, and here's the kicker. Zuckerberg wants it pushed out to third parties, meaning Reality OS could become the Android of the XR space. Open source, adaptable to tons of hardware, customizable to the nines. That's the goal, anyway. Sounds crazy, but Samsung and Google were unexactly lighting the world on fire with Wear OS or Samsung One UI. Maybe. Meta can swoop in and bring stability, killer features, and most importantly, developer focus. If they can pull it off, the implications are huge. All the app stores and services we use now could come along for the ride. The challenge, of course, is pulling off something so ambitious, especially with all the competition heating up. But stranger things have happened, just ask Apple. In terms of actual products launching this fall, there's lots to unpack. First off, we have the in-house Meta Smart Glasses. This is the Hypernova code name you've probably heard before. Think of it as the premium flagship device. The leaked renders tell the story. It's basically, it looks like a Wayfarer or Gatsby frame, but beefed up for AR duty. You have a waveguide display, supposedly powered by an ARM Cortex A7 CPU, onboard battery, 
camera, microphone, speaker, the works, the whole nine yards. And while specs are sketchy, rumors say it'll run a stripped-down Android with Horizon OS on top. The big question is how much of a computer does it have? Last-gen Meta glasses were more camera than smartphone. This one needs to be powerful enough to handle AR, but also last all day on a charge. There's also the wristband input method, which is very cool. Apparently it uses electromyography to pick up micro-muscle movements in your fingers and translate them into taps, pinches, etc. The benefit is no clunky controllers or gestures. You can interact naturally with whatever's on screen, but the downside is it relies on precise movements. Not great if you have shaky hands or limited mobility. Will Meta address this? Who knows? The other big question is price. Then we have the Ray-Bans. Two new models are coming, Aperol and Bellini, both refreshing last gen's design. Aperol. They're aiming for a sleeker look, like the Wayfarer, but with better battery life, upgraded audio, and of course that next level AI, apparently. It's packing the same chips as the high-end model, just without the display and waveguide tech. In terms of features, it should be similar to what you get with the Ray-Bans now, except faster, smarter, and more contextually aware. Think about it. Be sit right on your face, closer to your ears, right above your phone. They have access to your calendar, your contacts, your location data, your browsing history. They could leverage all that information to offer hyper-targeted suggestions, notifications, and updates. You can imagine them listening in on conversations, analyzing images you post, recommending music based on your mood. With every interaction, the AI would learn more and more about you. That's the theory, anyway. In practice, we'll have to see how useful and trustworthy these systems turn out to be. One thing that's clear is Meta is going all in on both fronts. They want to dominate the high end with cutting edge hardware and capture the masses with affordable, stylish smart glasses. Their pitch is that AI is the future and it needs to be integrated into our everyday lives, not just tucked away in pockets or bags. The challenge is making this vision appealing to consumers. We've seen how polarized opinions are about even basic things like smartwatches or earbuds. Throw in cameras, microphones, displays, and you're bound to get pushback. Questions of privacy, surveillance, security will only intensify. The good news is, Meta has a head start. Ow. They've been iterating on this tech for years. We've got partnerships with Ray-Ban, Facebook, and Instagram baked into the ecosystem. They have the AI infrastructure and expertise to make this stuff work well. What they need is killer marketing to overcome hesitation. Can they pull it off? That's the billion dollar question. Either way, the announcements this fall will be worth watching. Even if you don't plan to buy in, the implications for where tech is headed are huge. Whether it's virtual worlds or augmented reality, the lines are blurring. Your living room couch is no longer your portal to entertainment. It's being replaced by your bed, your commute, your kitchen table. There's a whole new frontier to explore. And some companies are positioned to lead the way. And that's all for now. What do you think about this? Now let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode.